Part four, Swan DIY 3.1s. They're basically a $750 pair of speakers, period. Thank you, uh, happy buying and building. So yeah, links in the description of this video will be the first three parts. Build the box, build the crossovers, assemble the whole thing, and now we're here. Now I've given this weeks of listening. I had other things to do. I had uh, those are the Yamos. I had the Kef R three hundreds here. I had to finish up the review of the Fluid FPX sevens. And now that the fluids are on my wall and the Kefs are gone, there's nothing distracting me from how fucking amazing these sound. And it could be, you know, just the fact that I built them. You know, I spent the time and the effort. It's like when you have a baby. You love your baby because you made that baby and it's your baby because it's your baby. That's what people call it your baby. Except if you steal it, then it's not your baby and you should give it back. So although these are quote unquote my baby because I put them together, um, I got too much fucking shit time and stuff going on. So it's like, look at all my babies. Hi all you babies and this fucking life so yeah so poo poo how do they sound first of all let me just say this they're huge and I'm pretty sure they'd be the heaviest bookshelves that I've ever reviewed the Kef R 300s boxed weighed 66 pounds for the pair and you know what I'm let's let's Z reviews this shit right here I've got my scale for doing weighing things. And I'm curious now. The measurements. Don't ground this out. <laughs> I'm going to give this to you in American units. That's not bad. 22 pounds, 11 ounces. Oh, that's only 45 ish pounds oof oof so that back rotate jiggle center angle good why the upside down uh, because I'm me and because a, I, I, I've been doing this so long where I flip them upside down that I've had them right set up they feel upside down doesn't that look proper like a big that's it, it's a fuck it. that's what you want to see, and then there's the, we'll get to the description of the actual speaker, but why they upside down? Uh, because when I sit, they're up high, and you want up high, see my video on height dominance, which is a term I invented, I think, where things, like if you put them low, it's like, eh, it's like, oh, look at the little puppy dog that's barking at me, but you put things up higher and higher, and I'm not talking about to the ceiling, but High enough up that it's like, ooh, you're dominating me now. I want to be dominated by the sound. Which, speaking of, let's pull the remote out of my pocket and make it dominate me with a random track. Can I jerk off about the imaging now? Because that's, that is the fixed, deeper and deeper, long version. Yeah, I'm impressed. What time is it? It's 12.47 a.m. And I just finished with the Yamo sound demo. I did the review and the sound demo for the Yamos. Those Yamo towers. Towers. $900, $700 Yamo tower. Expensive. These are, I'd take these in a heartbeat over those towers. Although for home theater with the, with the Atmos bounce, it's pretty good. Up, up, Wagen. Up, Wagen. Oop, she doesn't even speak English. There's a three-way speaker. I'm done with making three-way jokes about your mom and your grandma. It's a three-way speaker with you and your dog and your neighbor, the ugly one. Six and a half inch phase plug, some dust on it. Phase plug six and a half inch. Kevlar, oh Jesus, why are you here now? Two inch mid-range soft dome that's rare and then behind this foam which we'll get to in a second is an amt tweeter or ribbon tweeter 
I don't know. What's the proper terminology for what's in there? Let me show you. There it is. Oh. Oh, should I unpause it and see what happens to my face? Ah. So, why are the tweeters covered in foam, Zios? Did the kit come with that? Is that from the kit? It's not from the kit. Oh, Jesus. I just realized how shittily that was placed. Let's undo that. Let's go back to, to Yamo. It didn't come with a kit. It's also missing. Like, you're supposed to finish these speakers. That's another thing. You build the box with glue, just glue and some straps, and you're done. You cross over, you got some basic soldering going, even though I'm bad at it, apparently. And then you assemble it with a screwdriver. Or well, a driver drill and like nine different bits. Which is annoying. They should have it all be the same, but it ain't. And then when, you, when you're done, you've got a working speaker. This is a working speaker. We've got, um, even though these are dual five-way binding posts, like up and down, the extra crossover only hooks up to one of them. So I don't know why this is like this. I mean, I guess you could rebuild the crossover your own special way to separate the bass section from the mid-range and tweeter. Hi. Slut. My cat's a slut. You get this tube you bang in here, which is the port, which I could all, I can't quite fist it. Give it a couple more weeks. We'll, we'll go get that lube going. Joe H2O, we'll get that in there and get it right in there. In there, in there. Jump, jump a tubers, um, good girl. The foam. My biggest problem with the speakers from just a, they're finished. I'm ready to listen to them. I was, I was getting to the point where you have to finish them. Like, that's not finished. You can't just leave a speaker like raw MD. I mean, you can, I've done it. You're supposed to vinyl wrap it, or I would fabric wrap, but I'm bad. I have to pull the drivers out, tuck fabric, and screw everything back down. It would look cool like denim, like an old pair of jeans. But that's your job. And one of the reasons this kit costs $250 is yes, the labor is missing because you're, you're building the box, you're soldering the crossover, and you're unscrewing and everything, and you're not shipping it. Think about how much they save on having to pack, like safe pack things. So it's costing you $250. They'd have to pay some poor migrant in China. Well, actually, if you're in China, you're not a migrant. You're just Chinese. But if they built these in China, they'd have to pay that person very little. Then they have to give the boss man a big, big amount. Whatever. The pro point is, if you wanted to buy these speakers... I should have the page up, and I don't have the page up. I have that up instead, and I hope you're all appreciative of that. Swan sells a self-powered version of this speaker. It's in a beautiful box with, with real wood on the side, and it's finished, and it's slight angled, and it's self-powered, like I said, in the back. It's $1,100 a pair. For these drivers, these exact drivers, in a self-powered speaker, three, just these, these... Done for you with amplifiers is $1,100. So let's assume they take the amplifiers out and it's just a passive speaker. Maybe $400 comes off that price. They're still $700 speakers. Then they're much uglier when they're like this. So maybe another $100 comes off because I know how much that should cost. That's still $600. So you're getting for $250. And they rock the fuck out of this room. I had to keep looking there at my crown amp. Because my crown amp there will indicate if I have those subwoofers on. I'm like, do I have the subwoofers on? Because... I had those Yamo towers up, and they're triple five and a quarter and a tower, and these throw more low end. If it's not more low end, it's better low end. Take your pick. Literally nothing, nothing works. It's all, oh my God. Gonna lay you down by the fire Caress your woman, the body And make you moan and perspire That is uh, South Park, Rick James and Ike Turner, Love Gravy um, Obviously I know it by heart Because that's my song Better bass than you would ever imagine I mean it's a giant fucking box We're competing now Legitimately with my Bucart S300s For low end And those things are amazing for low end Competing with, maybe not beating, but competing with. 
Ooh, that's gonna get loud. Here. There's just a fucking moan. There's a bass moan. Anytime you want it to moan, you can moan. Ooh. Ooh, Devil Razor's the Unholy. That's the test. Wait. Where is that low end coming from, boys and girls? Because I don't fucking know. I keep looking over there. Is my crown amp doing something? Are those on? Is that sub on? No, it can't be on because I'm not even, the receiver's not even on because I'm passing through the mini DSP. Okay. Low end is covered. These are fucking astonishing with low end. Astonishing with low end. Let's talk about vocal clarity. Vocal clarity. I love a Manchu. All right, let's go to let's go right to Mrs. Rubarth. Storms in the oceans, tundra, washing day, washing day. Too much whiskey, too much smoke. Last night's tears hang on my coat, but now the rain has stopped. It. Having it be a three-way, and having it be a soft dome three-way is interesting, because you don't see soft dome mid-ranges. I know of only two things. Adam Audio, who makes the uh, Adam monitors, which I now have like a gaggle of Adam monitors in here. I got the T7Vs, the 5Vs, and those are the A5Xs. They make an even higher series than those $1,000 monitors. They make a higher series where each speaker's three grand. And there's a soft dome mid-range in it. It's a three-way with a soft dome. My father built a back deck to his 1977 Buick LeSabre. It was ugly green. And my grandfather rolled on mint green on the trunk. It was terrible looking. But he built a speaker array for the back deck that he just built out of wood, mounted a bunch of old drivers in it, put a crossover in it, slid it on the back deck, covered it with carpet, and it had soft dome mid-ranges in it. Realistic ones from Radio Shack from back in the day. And the sound quality of a 1977 Buick LeSabre was unbeaten until like three years ago in my fucking mind. way loud. I don't know if you quite got that because the GoPro compresses, but that was full tilt. Fucking, did I break something? Sorry. How are you still here? Love this little girl. Anyway, dome mid-range vocal clarity. Let me just talk about dome mid-ranges and vocal clarity. It's where it's at. It Because it, mid-range is like a lot Mid-range has a lot to do with what makes a speaker sound good. You can get the low end, okay, that's good. Usually with a two-way, oh, the low end's good, and the mid-range is share with that, and then you get the, where's the crossover for the tweeter? Is the tweeter too sharp? W with this taking care of the bulk of the sound, or the bulk of the frequency range at least, um, this gets to be a little bit sharper than it would normally, and this gets to go a little lower than it would normally, because this is taking over. And vocals are just fucking sweet. If anything with vocals. Honestly, Bruce Springsteen is not a vocal. Lyra Lynn. Ooh, Lyra Lynn. My least favorite life. From the True Detective Season 2 soundtrack. Amazing. Skipping ahead. Okay, so and a lifetime goes on. It's like I've never heard vocals. In small. This is my least favorite you. She hears me clicking. Okay. Of course the laser pointer clicks. That's why. So Low end, low end mid bass is covered by six and a half inch phase plugged crazy speaker. Mid range, that 
$3,000 speakers have that. And you won't see them. Also, the HTD Level 3 towers have that. Maybe even a bigger one. Up. 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 You're, you're, you're not ruining the review because everyone loves you. You're lucky. Imagine if no one liked my cat. It would be terrible. The issue comes with this, which is a very good, very prominent AMT, or ribbon tweeter, however you want to call it. And if I take off the sound condoms, and we go raw dog at this, you're not going to hear it on the camera, but I'll hear it. And when I did the sound demo, which I did before this video and taping. Far above Earth and stone. Oh, it's so clear. It's so clear. That was a weird horn. Here, Jurassic Park Suite. Whoa, am I hearing people outside or is that something in the music? Hold on. No, no, you could hear. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? I heard it. It's literally somebody putting something down while they're playing instruments or someone's instrument moving. He's fucking dumb. Detail-oriented speakers, these are. Now, the foamies... Here, I have a bunch of them here. I've been keeping them around. Um, I, these are all different foams you're supposed to add into your headphone drivers. And I've gotten them over the years from everything. Fucking everything. These are really thick. These were the thinnest ones. I tried these first. And I don't know what pads they came with. Thick one again, and then these two big fatties. Some cat hair on it. And these were more more of the felt-like. They had like a nice fabric. So I went with those on there, and it, whatever I didn't like about the highs, which is very little, it was just like, ooh, ooh, I was listening to music. I'm like, ooh, you know what? I need less. And I have a mini DSP and I could correct it with that, but I figured this way. Since these are DIY speakers, you can just keep DIYing. It's no one that says you can't. If you got a, if I had a normal pair of speakers up here, I would not ever be like, look, these speakers are great, except you gotta glue foam to the fucking driver. I would never say that. But since these are DIY, who's to say you can't modify the tweeter with a little piece of foam over it? It's a thin disc of foam, just, just one of these. Just plop it on there and just calm it down it's great they're fucking fantastic they just the tweeter is j and someone actually said uh someone was talking about me on twitch in the comments that oh, oh you could fix that you got to pull the crossover out and you got to change a few parts and components and i'm like i'm not if you know about it beforehand that's fine if you want to adjust the sound before you even know what it sounds like that's fine what <laughs> Did I mention they get loud? These are 4 ohm, by the way. 4 ohm. Not 8 ohm, not 6 ohm. There's no fucking around. They're 4 ohm. And with my very <sighs> covered in crappy uh, crown 2502s, that means there's 2400 watts going into each one of these, minus the five clicks and the three decibel pull off. <laughs> You could hear that like that sharp like bell or whatever the fucking instrument that is. Nang. Too close to that. Do not put these on your desk. That's I I keep backing up. I want to sit down. I'm not taking these off. Here's the thing. Um I'm done with those. My ohms could go back up. I could bring up my I'm not taking these off. Probably for the next two weeks. Oh no, that's a lie. Because I've got to unbox those Elex. Those are the 6.2s. And um, I don't have high enough. These have given me such insane expectations for what you get for your money that, you know, Elax are just going to be like, eh, they're not going to be this. They're not going to be this. They can't. They don't have what it takes. You know what? So loud. So fucking loud. I mean, it's like an Agua Spanish caravan on. 
and I could just, even with that bit of foam off for like three seconds, I'm just, all I hear, now I'm looking at the speaker and all I hear is right there. It's just, it's 5%, just too much trouble. 100% worth buying. If you built a home theater and you built left channel, center channel, right channel, It'd be a waste to put in the rears, but fuck it, they're so cheap. 250 a pair, just build another set for the rears. Who gives a shit? And the other one, the matching one, you could put into the into a center back. You could buy three of these sets for $750, spend two weeks putting them together, and kill someone in your home theater. Kill them dead. Dead. D-E-D. -E -D. Dead. For $750. You'd get a 6.0. Now, can you add a sub? Absolutely. I can. I can hit a button right now, and those two 10 inch infinities with the side firing dual 10 inch passive radios will come on, and we'll just level this whole fucking building. But they're so good without it. There, listen to that low end. Feel that low end. Don't even listen to it. Feel it. Hans Zimmer's Hunger from Black Hawk Down. There's an, I was thinking of words. The way I usually do a review is I sit down and before I'm listening to it, and I'm just thinking about what to say. Give me a word, I just need a word. Once I know a word, I could start a review. Energy. These are energetic speakers. They get you excited to listen to things on it. Some speakers you listen to it, and the word is calm, or soft. And these are not that. These are not calm speakers. These are speakers you are actively seeking, like, oh man, you know what I wanna hear on this? And that, and you go to that. That's not what I want to hear. They're uppity. These are uppity fucking speakers. They get up in your face. And I can never get rid of them, because I built them. They're my babies. I have to keep them and eventually... F I don't want... if. Water gets on exposed MDF, it'll blow up like a sponge and it'll ruin everything. So I really have to consider how I'm finishing them. Look at my cute little cat. They have more, how do they have more low end than the fucking tower speakers? And they're three feet up in the air. Because usually, you know, the port's right there on the bottom, so it's nice and low and that'll... And those make bass, but these just make the best bass. Disaster piece, the last general. Ooh, the Dark Knight. Oh, I have to go to a. I have to go to a, a thing. Oh, is it? Oh, uh, fuck. Which one is it? The one where it's so low that I want to puke. Agent of Chaos, a watchful guardian, a little push. I'd have to pause the video to find out. God damn it. I'll figure it out later. It's not why it's so serious. You complete me this bro. Like a dog chasing cars, I'm not here. Fuck. These are 100% worth $250. If the kit was $500, it'd be worth $500. How's that? Because putting them together is worth whatever your time is worth. If you're a brain surgeon and you gotta take off two days, and those two days cost you $4,500, you may want to just have someone else build you your speakers. But if you're a blue collar motherfucker and you're like, you know what, I need good speakers for cheap, and you told me SVS Ultras or these, I'm taking these. I'm, it's, that's hard to, these have similar refinement characteristics like the Ultras have. And I think it's just brute force. Because the Ultras were a two-way, and the tweeter was so good and accurate, and then the low end was impressive, and they were a small box. And this is sort of like, all right, let's just make it a bigger box and a three-way, and then put a fucking AMT, and then put a good six in a cat, and it'll just be as good. And it is. It is just as good. These are really, really fucking competitive. 
CAF R300s were just here, and I called those pretty much some of the best speakers I've ever heard. And I would put these in a fight with those. I don't know if they'd win. I think they wouldn't win in looks. Would they win in, in low end? I probably, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna take these in low end. So much Richard Cheese. Ooh, ooh, all right, thank God. It's up, see a lot of this is just, just straight up. I wanna go to Inca Steppa by Juno Reactor, right there. Cause that's the song I used to test everything with bass. This is going back five, six years. That was the song. I would upload that shit to Google Drive and be like, oh, you gotta test bass. We've gone past this now as people. We've grown past Juno Reactor, which is rare. Um, I love these speakers. Not just because I built them. That's bullshit. I, if they sucked, I'd tell you they sucked, and I'd say this is a waste of time, and then I'd sell them to you in a yard sale. I'd be like, yeah, don't buy these. Buy them in my yard sale. Built. I'm going to put these back on. You can't. The camera isn't affected by it, but my brain, my brain hears it. Hears with my eyes gonna put these little it's just this is completely up to me this is my little foible is I need to just quell just quell that tweeter just a just such a small amount that that foam does it for headphones <laughs> what is the most talking I've ever done in my whole career Soundstage imaging, let's talk about it. Uh, it's got all of it. It's got soundstage that does that thing where sounds sound like they're coming from like here. It's very rare on speakers. It happens if I'm sitting here and all of a sudden it's like, wait, is my surround sound on? And it literally can't be because mini DSP is, I don't fucking get it. Oh my God. It's like every other speaker has got a fucking Blanket over it, except for these. I'm not saying a lot. I'm looking at my fucking wall. I'm just going, which ones would I rather be? Honestly, honestly, right now, I'm looking at my wall and going, you know what? Which ones would I rather be listening to right now? 530s wouldn't get loud enough. I pull my boo carts out, but they're too fucking expensive and I have to change the parts out if it breaks. Although he did tell me he would sell me the driver alone if I needed it. The Yamo C103s, God, I love those, but right now I'm not feeling the mood for soft. I want, I want, I want fucking, mmm, I want to feel it. Right, Chewbacca? You're going to climb in your little box? Good. These are it. These are the ones I want up here. If I'm doing bookshelf speakers, it's going to be these. There's a reason they get such high praise. It's a swan setup. I didn't even like... I haven't even emphasized the fact that this is a swan setup. Do you know what swan and high vi Do you even know? Because the M110s was like the little setup and everyone loves those. And it just, there's many little cheap sets of swans using the high vi drivers people love. Then I got the goddamn M200 Mark III's. My favorite speaker, it said it on the review, my favorite speaker is a swan M200 Mark III. Or, yeah, it was Mark III, that was the Mark III Plus. And... It just did things with depth and imaging. Like, how? How could it do this for fucking $450 with a speaker? How is this even possible? Now, slide Swan into a category which I've never experienced before, which is massive passive. Is that a gay bar? Massive passive. I feel like that phrase has never been said, and I need to coin it for something. Hey girls, you want to check out my massive passive? <laughs> Juice bar. Bowling alley. These just sound like they put really fucking high quality drivers into a very basic box. 
that some idiot glued together. And the crossover was designed by someone who knew what they were doing. Not assembled by someone who knew what they were doing, just... And then you play it. You just... Love was the egg. See. And it was born in a cloud with silver. These are impressive speakers. These are the speakers you put on to impress someone who's never heard good speakers before. I could put on any number of speakers and they'd be good. But none of them would grab... These are, these are like stacks. Not, not L700s. Not L300s, the 207 Ultras. The ones that really fucking sound different than everything you've heard. Like, oh my god, what is that sound? How is that low end even appearing? And uh, uh, uh. That's what these are. I'm, I'm pretty much fucking sold on... I've been sold on DIY, I just never had the time or the energy. This kit was as complete as it comes. Came with everything, except for the glue and the stuffing. I thought I had stuffing, it didn't have stuffing, it was the foams. So you had to add some stuffing and some glue and you're done. You need like $30 in clamps and $5 in glue and a screwdriver with multiple different tips. And you put this in a soldering iron. They, they sound so big. Like the legend of the three lands. Is this, oh, they just, ugh. I kind of, if they were tower speakers, let's see, how would I do this into a tower? Take exactly what you have here, shorten it up this way, right? A little deep, shorten it up inch or two, so they make the box longer. Then the remaining space below that, you put a side firing eight inch with an eight inch pass on the other side, and that would be the equivalent of adding like those subwoofers, and then you'd never fucking need another speaker in your entire life. These are some of the best speakers I've heard in my living room for music. No shit. You can come here and be like, let me hear them. And then I'll be like, here you go. And be like, yep, those are the fucking best. And um, they're aggressive as fuck for movies, which is fantastic. <laughs> Listen to that aggressive movie soundtrack. Steelers Wheels Stuck in the Middle with You. That's from a movie. I'm just Madoka Magica, uh, post whatever. It's like a little fucking. What is that? Like tapping? It's like it's, everything's so finite and delicate and so loud. All these little finite details are there, but you don't have to strain to hear them. They're all just playing loudly through either any other driver that suits it. Oh no, this this, la this thing that's very, very delicate, let's put that through the main uh, bass driver. Oh, and this thing that's really delicate, put that through the mid-range. Listen to that, put that through the treble. Fucking tweeter. Sh shove everything, everything out. And they're not fatiguing, except for that high, this is a little bit, I wanna listen to these for fucking hours. There, it's a rare occasion I'll get a speaker and be like super jazzed at the one in the morning review, but it just has to get done. I have to do this review, I have to, I'll never talk, I'll be like, no, I'll talk about them next week. Talk about them now, they're fucking amazing, what are you waiting for? What, you don't have to watch, you could skim through my three videos that I put together, this being the fourth, unless I do another one that's the fifth, that's the actual finished video, I don't think I'm ever finishing these speakers. It's sad, but I'm lazy, and they're done, and I can move on. <laughs> Evangelion 333, it will mean victory. If you haven't watched an anime ever, go watch the Evangelion movies, you'll fucking die. <laughs> fucking crazy. Anyway, so yes, I can't say yes hard enough. There's a sound demo in the description. Don't think it does it justice, honestly. My sound demos are there to sort of give you like a taste of what things sound like, if you can get clarity out of it, but it's a lot of me doing this with the microphone to see, wait, that's too bright and I twist it a little bit. So I get it as close sounding as I can in my Ether C flows, and then you people can just judge. Link in the description for these. Link in the description for her, if you want to use her as a wallpaper. Link in the description for 
Did you just rev? Are you revving? Are you revving? What is that? Oh man, that's like an old coronet or something. It sounds like shit. Jesus. Dead mouse, turning point. The fight. You know, I can't. I just want to sit here playing music all day. This is probably the most tracks I've ever switched through on a speaker review. It's got to be a record. I just want you to hear music on them, and it, it pains me that I can't just play it and like nod my head because that's the only way you're going to know what these sound like. These are 100% a fucking... They sound... Once you get the tweeter sorted out and you get them upright, they're a $1,000 pair of speakers. Easy. I would say 700 just because they're unfinished, but fuck that. How do they sound? They sound like a $1,000 pair of speakers. DIY is always the way to go. People are telling me DIY is always the way to go. And it fucking might be, but it's not like I could just say, here, do this. If you're a college guy and you don't have access to, you know, glue, because your roommate keeps sniffing it all, it's harder to put together. All right, before this is a 45-minute review, let me just end it at, at 33, yeah, 30, 35, 35 minutes. I'm going to say it's a 35-minute review. I love these things. They're, they're butt ugly. They're butt ugly, and you can put them right side up, but that's the way the losers do it. The cool people just want... I don't know. There's something about that big driver up top. I just... I can't live with it any other way. You'll, if you watch enough of my videos, you'll start to feel like any speaker put up put the other way is wrong. Which is what I'm trying to do in life. I'm trying to make people believe the wrong is right and the right is wrong. It's like Robin Hood, but uh, no money. Unless little Johns. Anyway... Like I said, links to these in the description, links to her in the description, links to the Patreon, which bought these speakers and bought the straps and bought the glue and spent the time and pays the rent. That's in the description or in the upper right. What else do I link to? That's it. Just these. There's no reason to link anything else. Nothing else should be linked in the description. Not even a funny link to anything funny. Um, no. Maybe there'll be another link down there. It doesn't matter. All right. Thank you. Sound demo is down in the description as well. This guy's going the wrong way down a one-way street. Asshole. Done.